Good morning, and welcome to the Buck Matthews Show. Today, our very special guests comprise most of the Dave Brubeck family, two generations of Brubeck. Here's Buck with more. Good morning. It's been a long time since we've had excitement like this in the studio. And it's been 25 years uh, that the man who leads the group you are about to hear has been exciting not only this country, but the world with his great improvisational jazz and his great composed jazz. He is a giant in the music industry. There's no other way to describe him. Uh, the whole new thing with the Brubeck family is that uh, Dave Brubeck is now on tour with his sons in uh, something that is electrifying audiences at colleges and uh, music halls all over the world. They have just concluded a very successful tour in Europe and they are playing tonight at Civic Auditorium with the Grand Rapids Symphony Orchestra and Civic Auditorium should really rock tonight. It's a great pleasure to introduce two generations of Brubeck.
Back and Sons. Terrific. Woo! To meet Dave Brobeck. Isn't that something else? My word. Say, folks, if you have trouble getting your pots and pans to look like you really want them to look, you should try this little rascal, Zud, the heavy-duty cleaner that works. Zud gets rid of tarnish, scorch, stains, and other discolorations on pots and pans. Zud even shines stainless steel. Look at this. This pan looks pathetic. But you can see what happens with Zud. See there? The pan is sparkling clean. Now the lady takes care of the drip pans on the stove. They get badly stained, too, and you can clean them with Zud because Zud gets rid of the ugly stains and discolorations. And if your ceramic cookware has lots of little unsightly metal marks because your husband cooks sometimes, you'll find they disappear with Zud, too. See that? So to keep your kitchenware clean and bright, 
you can do it with Zed, the heavy-duty cleaner that works. Get Zed in the cleanser section of your store or ask the store manager for it. Zed, it is super delicious. Take that home. <laughs> Don't eat it for breakfast. <laughs> Dave, if you'll dress, I'd like the audience to have an opportunity to get to know you a little bit, as if they didn't already. Put that in my car. Yeah, sure I can. I didn't know whether he wanted me to put my arms around him. Or <laughs> I th <laughs> <laughs> what do I always say? <laughs> I think I'm falling in love. <laughs> Dave Brubeck and his sons, Chris, Darius, and Dan, have been just setting the world on fire musically in the last several months, and it's really going great. I think that those boys deserve a lot of credit for allowing their father to play with them. Occasionally. <laughs> it is their idea. It's not the Is other way true? around, yeah. Uh, you think I'd do something like this? <laughs> <laughs> they need a side man, right? Yeah. You know, you're the envy of a lot of fathers who, who don't have that kind of rapport with the sons. And it's really working out great. Yeah. yeah. It's really worked in Europe. I didn't know because I've always gone over there with the top musicians in the world. Mm -hmm. Paul Desmond or Jerry Mulligan, Joe Morello, Alan Dawson, Jack Six. But now who needs Gina. those guys? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I got a response. <laughs> uh, it, it was something that I thought a lot about whether to go without them. But mm -hmm. the promoter over there named Norman Grants that did uh, jazz at the Philharmonic mm -hmm. and really got jazz going here in the United States. Uh, he didn't want me to bring the older guys. He said, uh, "You know, we've got to get the youth in, in Europe." interested in, in what's going on in jazz with the young people. And uh, you've been over here, well, I've been over there one to three times a year since 1958. He said, oh, let's do something new. Well, it went so well that they want us back in October. Uh, That's great. Yeah, and we tore it up over there. Uh, the, the idea of bringing the two generations seemed to mean a lot to the German people. It should mean it, a lot to the American people. Yeah, but you, they explained it to me, that it means a lot to, to any people, but in Germany, the youths have even a worse thing to turn in on their folks. Is that right? They can say, well, why should you tell me what to do? Uh, your generation was responsible for You've been into serious music for a long time anyway, if, if you can differentiate between what you're doing tonight and what you normally do as being serious music as opposed to something else. But tonight at Civic Auditorium, you're performing with the Grand Rapids Symphony. Uh, is that, uh, do you find that uh, stultifying in some way? Uh, do you prefer to work in the freeform style that you're able to do when just you and the boys are working in concert? Well, that is a hard question to answer because I've done a lot of pieces. We recently played with the Detroit Symphony using Christopher's rock group mm -hmm. and the Ann Arbor Chorus and the Detroit Symphony. And uh, that is trying to throw a lot of things together that usually don't work together. Like uh, th that concert would be like two cats and one dog in the <laughs> same cage. Yeah. And, but to try and make it work is what we're all trying to do. And it is a very hard problem because the symphonic musicians usually have not experienced enough jazz and the jazz enough classical mm -hmm. that they'll work together. But more and more of the orchestras have young kids in them, kids that have played jazz, played uh, more pop music, and yet they can play classical music. Well, yeah. when, when that happens, that all the, the uh, symphony orchestras have people that can do both, and they should be able to, I think, eventually. Then we'll have a great, easy time. We have a rather high percentage of young people in the Grand Rapids Symphony, and, uh, and I, I think a good many of them have turned on to jazz. And I, I know how very thrilled they are to be able to play with you and the guys. Yeah, and Teo was really funny last night, the way he was swinging up there. I don't think he's, he's done that I don't think jazz. Teo has done much yeah, jazz. Yeah, and that was great. He's a super conductor, though. Oh, he is. Yeah. Well, as we say, he's got his chops together. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good phrase. I have to remember that the next time he's on the show. He's got his chops together. Well, he, we really feel he's doing great things for the orchestra, and the orchestra, of course, is doing great things for the community. Uh, your work with the boys now, uh, how long have you been together as a group? 
We've been doing large shows like at Lincoln Center uh, for three years where we use all of Darius's jazz ensemble. Danny plays in the, the drummer, mm -hmm. Danny plays in Darius's jazz ensemble. We've been using all of Chris's rock group and all of my adult group. We've been doing that for about three years. But the, the, my son said, look, we can do the whole thing with eight people instead of having 18. Mm -hmm. And on the world tour, you got to start thinking about, uh, well, f for instance, coming home, the uh, overweight on the electric piano was, uh, well, it should have been $1,500. Mm, my uh, word. Uh, but they started to be nice to us, and it was only 11. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and said, we'll put it in freight and things like that. But just the amount of guys you take, yeah. we're going all around the world, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Brazil, Israel, back to Europe. And uh, you can't bring 18 people. So Darius thought of condensing the whole thing by taking two from the rock group, his whole group, and I represent my old group because my kids know all the tunes that I can play with a quartet. Because you've made them listen to the records. Made so them. I beat them. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, exactly why. They you, know the old book, whereas no one else knows it unless I get together the old quartet. Are you finding that... Uh, that that the sons and, and their style of music uh, are influencing you? Well, sure. Uh, I, I get used to a lot of things that, uh, just the fact that the bass is, is not a stand-up bass, mm -hmm. it's an electric bass, and this is an electric piano. These, these sounds right there create a, a different environment for me. What you're doing tonight now with the symphony, uh, these are all your own compositions, aren't they? Yeah, right. Uh, it's. The Brandenburg Gate is one where I wrote the theme, and my brother, who was dean of a conservatory or college, mm -hmm. some such thing. <laughs> uh, it must be important yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important to me because he quit writing as soon as they made him dean. He oh, was so busy yeah. that he quit writing for me. But he did write things that we recorded with Bernstein called mm -hmm. Dialogues for Jazz, Combo, and Symphony. He was one of the first composers to really use the two idioms together. Uh, he has taken one of my themes, and we do it like a concerto style, Brandenburg Gate, it's called, mm -hmm. where the orchestra plays a the theme, and then we imp improvise on it. And that's uh, a very nice piece, because I can say that, my brother wrote it. <laughs> uh, then there's, we do excerpts from The Light in the Wilderness, and then a piece that has a drum solo for Danny called Out of the Way. I think it would be a good idea if we identified the sons, so one by each. Uh, would you guys stand up long enough for us to be able to identify? It's Dan is on the drums and bare feet. You can't see it. I hope the building doesn't catch fire. Cause his shoes and socks are way in the back. And uh, that's uh, Chris uh, on the Fender bass. And Darius is at the electric piano. And this is what's his name? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Let's let's give him all. Of them. Dave, our audience is made up largely of uh, junior college students this morning. There are some ladies also from the Women's Symphony Committee and other interested mm -hmm. people who just came in to keep dry. Uh, <laughs> I would think that some of these people, being jazz fans, might have a couple of questions they'd like to ask, too. So if you'd like to stand up and, uh, and ask a question of Dave Brubeck, I'll be glad to uh, relay it so the audience can hear it, too. Think of something fast. There's one in the back. How do you account for the fact that so many jazz purists have uh, little to do with you and your music and doesn't bother you very much? Uh, the question was uh, for the audience at home, and in case you didn't hear it. Tell me, did, could they hear it? They could hear it. Okay, I don't have to repeat it. Now, do you remember the question? Very well. <laughs> uh, what have you read lately? Well, I haven't read anything against you yeah. for about a year. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when did you stop beating your wife? Uh, yeah. Uh, what you got in this situation, I hope you really make it to the top in whatever field you're in, and you'll discover that there's about 90% of the people, or 99, that aren't going to make it. And they'll get about halfway up, and they'll know that the only way they can get to the top is with a rock, and they'll start throwing them. And you remember that. And as far as jazz purists, uh, I think that what's going on in jazz, there's probably no one that did more than the quartet to really establish directions. Uh, some of the guys I admire the most that have done the most in jazz, I know that I influence them. 
And I know that uh, purists were saying we shouldn't play in 5-4 time. And we shouldn't use African rhythms. And we did it. And the purists wanted to keep the whole country sound like a German march. <laughs> and as soon as you break with tradition, with people that don't know tradition, for instance, when I would do something in the church with uh, popular music, there would be so-called traditional purists say, you can't put jazz in church. But they didn't know tradition. Bach used drinking songs so the congregation would know the melody. <laughs> and so if you're really traditional, you follow the lead of people like Bach. You can't get above that. And you do things that worked throughout history. But you've got to have that audience, whether it's a congregation or what, involved. And there's many masses that are all based on one drinking song. Really get them into that. It would be like the beer bell polka or something. <laughs> but you know, reharmonize it and put a, a, a text to it. It seems to me that uh, that jazz purist is a contradiction in terms. There can't anyway. be a jazz purist. Yeah, because uh, because jazz is so improvisational. And, yeah. All the great jazz musicians don't even want to use the word jazz. Ellington, Kenton, they want to call it their music. I, I just soon call it my music. Brubeck you know. music. Brubeck. Yeah. Any other questions? Why call it jazz? <laughs> but it's not a bad name. If you knew the derivation of the word and what kind of a house it's named after in New Orleans, you'd know why we don't like it I, too much. <laughs> I have a question in the eight dollar seats here. Yeah. Is yes. Is New Heavenly Blues still together? Is New Heavenly Blues? That's, that's too bad. The question was, is New Heavenly Blues together, which is a group that uh, Chris played in, right? Yes. And he says that it is not intact. No, when, I, when, I, when I went on the road with Dad, I couldn't. For a while, I was at U of M and also on the road with New Heavenly Blue, which is quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Working with two groups at the same time, right? When I went on the road with Dad, I had, had to break it. And Chael is the guy that used to give us a hard time <laughs> because we'd finish in New Orleans, say, I remember that date, and... Uh, Chris would have to be back at Ann Arbor at 10 in the morning, so he'd have to fly all night because Teo wouldn't give him an excuse for Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You need all the pieces in the orchestra. Question over here. Yeah, what are Paul Desmond, Gene Wright, and Joe Morello doing right now? Yeah. Uh, Paul Desmond. Looking for work. <laughs> uh, Paul has just gone around the world with us last year. We recorded an album called All Together Again for the very first time. Uh, he just played Lincoln Center with his Symphony Hall in Boston. He's doing quite well. Joe Morello is a clinician where he goes around playing drum clinics, as he says, for six, sick drummers. <laughs> uh, and uh, Eugene Wright, my former bass man, is bass man now with a great trio, Monty Alexander, great jazz trio. Uh, there was some suspicion at, at one time that uh, that Paul Desmond was, uh, or that the two of you were helpless without each other almost, because you had you had played so much together, and yeah. you, you it almost became Brubeck Desmond or Desmond Brubeck. And uh, twenty one years we played together. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Did you did you have withdrawal pains when you stopped playing with Paul Desmond? <laughs> no, a long time before that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'll tell you when you when you're with guys on the road, uh, you're with them so much more than you're with your family right. because you're traveling all day together in the airplanes, and uh, then you get on a bus, go to the hotel, check in, go go to the concert hall, and then you repeat the same thing. We've just done 14 in a row in Europe without are, a day off. Are you sick of the suns already? No. <laughs> but we used to do 120. I've done 120 in a row, a different oh, place Lord. every day, mm. without a day off. The first big college tour I did here, we did 90 in a row, without a day off. That's torture. That's it nice. was. Yeah. These people want to hear more music, and I know the audience does. It's, it's great to talk with you, and I, here, I'll do the thing again. <laughs> I really appreciate your being here, and, uh, and we do want to hear some more music. Thank you, and I'll, I'll be up in the cheap seats tonight at Civic Auditorium. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dave Brubeck.
of two generations of Brubeck was made through the courtesy of the American Federation of Musicians and the Grand Rapids Federation of Musicians. Much wardrobe provided through the courtesy of Houseman's of Grand Rapids.